Hello again. Uh, we're continuing the subject of light. Can you remember the last lesson? We said that if you increase the frequency, then you increase the energy in the wave. And also, we looked at the, the relationship between frequency and wavelength and how they were inversely proportional to each other. So this is a, just a, a diagram I've just taken off the internet, and it shows that if you increase the frequency, yeah, you decrease the wavelength. So if the frequency is very high, the wavelength is very, very short. Yes. And if the frequency is very low, then the wavelength is very long. So uh, long wavelengths or low frequencies are called radio waves. Long radio waves, radio waves, FM and AM radio. On your car stereo, of course, you have a radio. Um, so that's radio waves. Uh, slightly higher frequency, microwaves, like your microwave oven uses microwaves. Then we get infrared. Uh, we've already talked about infrared. We talked about radiation as a way of transferring heat from one point to the other. So your oven at home, your cooker at home, uh, if you stand near it you can feel the infrared radiation or if you have a, a, a heater at home um, central heating for example and you stand next to the heater and you can feel the heat and what you're actually feeling is the infrared radiation yeah. and then we get visible light and visible lights the wavelength varies between about uh, 400 uh, nanometers to 700 nanometers nano actually means uh, one billionth so we're talking about billionths yes, of a meter here very very small I mean, it's incredibly small, isn't it? You know, billionths of a, of a meter. Um, whereas, if you were to look at, for example, FM radio, you know, you're looking at, at the, the wavelength being about one meter. Yes. Okay, so visible lights. Then, uh, when we go to an even higher frequency, we have ultraviolets. Uh, you've got to be very careful of ultraviolet lights. Oh, for example, when you go onto the beach. Yes, if you spend too long on the beach you can get sunburn and the sunburn is mainly caused by ultraviolet radiation. And then x-rays, of course you have to be very careful of x-rays, that's why when you go and get your teeth x-rayed they put you in a, a, a lead jacket and also the person taking the x-rays actually goes into another room to uh, x-ray you because uh, that, you know, the x-ray operator uh, actually knows that, um, you know, she or he has to be uh, very careful with x-rays and then we get gamma rays okay so that's the full electromagnetic spectrum so um, at the end of the last lesson can you remember we said um, that if you increase the frequency then you are going to increase the intensity or increase the energy of the wave and I told you that this was classical theory, but it's not completely true. It, it's not true because, well, in fact, it's lu it's lucky it's not true, really, because it means that if you were, for example, sitting on the beach, uh, sunbathing, right, then you'd get burnt to death by, you know, <laughs> gamma rays, X-rays, and ultraviolet radiation. Yeah. So, in fact, what actually happens in real life is, yes this classical theory holds true in the beginning yes but then at about this point here the wave goes some something like that yes forget forget this part here yes so this is the sort of shape of the wave here it goes something like that so it actually the the wave actually dies down and it actually dies down in the ultraviolets uh, frequency range. So just here, this is uh, where the energy level dies down. It doesn't, in fact, continue g getting um, more powerful and more powerful. Yeah? Otherwise, you know, you'd be burnt to a cinder on the beach when you go sunbathing. Yes. This lesson, we're going to be looking at why class classical theory actually uh, breaks down. So. A scientist actually had a name for this, uh, you know, this 
sort of disagreements between classical theory and what actually happens in real life and they actually called it the ultraviolet catastrophe this decrease in energy actually happens in the ultraviolet range so today's lesson is going to be about why the classical theory wasn't the full story this here we had intensity wasn't it there was intensity or en energy and this was the, the frequency wasn't it and in classical theory we said that if you increase the frequency then you increase the intensity yeah. but in real life uh, that, that doesn't happen and the scientists knew that it that didn't happen uh, so mathematically it might have happened like that but in real life in the beginning the, the theory held true right but then at about the ultraviolet frequencies um, the intensity of the light you know, would diminish and decrease to zero and the reason this happens is a, a quantum mechanical effect and we're going to be talking about this quantum mechanical effect and to do that I want you to imagine something um, completely different Imagine there's this uh, lorry, and this lorry is going around to different schools in your area, and it's delivering paints. So in this lorry, there are thousands and thousands of tins of paints, you know, quite heavy tins, yeah, but uh, thousands and thousands of tins anyway. Yeah. And it arrives at your school, and your, your teacher says to you, come on, children, let's go out and get some paints. Yeah. So you go to the lorry, so, so let's quickly draw a lorry. There's the lorry there. And you open the, the, the back door of the lorry and you, you take the paint out and you bring the paint into, you know, into your, your school building, yes. But uh, the company who supplies the paints, they've done something rather strange with the tins of paint. And you need to look at this spreadsheet here for me to explain what the paint company has done. What they've done is they've put the, the paint tins, the tins of paint, into boxes. Now, some boxes contain no paint, some boxes contain one tin of paint, some boxes contain two tins of paint, some boxes contain three tins of paint, some boxes contain four tins of paint, some boxes contain five tins of paint, some boxes contain six tins of paint, some boxes contain seven tins of paint, some boxes contain eight tins of paint, and some boxes contain nine tins of paint. So at the top of this spreadsheet I've shown how many tins of paint there are in the different color boxes for example the yellow box has nine tins of paint now in your class some of the children are very strong and some of the children are you know not so strong and some of the children are rather weak yeah and so some children decide you know to for example take the box with three tins of paints yes other children might be stronger in fact m most of the children are you know are quite strong and and they can carry boxes with uh, five tins of paint right but certainly nobody is strong enough in the class to carry uh, a box with eight tins of paint in it and because nobody is strong enough to carry a box with eight tins of paint in it nobody is strong enough to carry a box with nine tins of paint either so let's see what actually happens when the children go to the lorry and start taking the paint out of the lorry and bringing it into the school luckily the um, there's not a child stupid enough to take the box which is empty which has zero tins of paint in it but let's say there's a, a child and he's got a bad back he decides to take this box so one right? uh, oh yes yeah, so just just look at what happens to the graph here as I, as I start filling it in okay right so then there's a slightly stronger child and um, he, he takes a, another box 
in but this box has two tins of paint in it and his friend also takes a, a box with two tins of paint and then a child who's slightly stronger well they take there's three children and they take boxes in into the school and each box contains uh, three tins of paint and then we have some even stronger children these children uh, they take boxes with four tins of paint in and there are four children who take four boxes in to the school and each box has four tins of paint and then uh, you know most of the children they are um, you know they're quite fit and strong and they decide to, to take uh, the boxes with five tins of paint yeah, because you know they're, they're quite strong and they want to get the, the work done so there are five children who do that um, Okay, then there's the very strong children, and the very strong children, they decide to take the boxes which contain six tins of paint. But there are not so many very, very strong children. Yeah, there's four of them. And then there are really, really strong kids, and there are only three really, really strong kids in the school. Uh, and they're really big kids and they're very very strong and they decide to take the very very heavy boxes uh, with seven tins of paint in but nobody is strong enough to take the um, boxes with eight tins of paint in yeah? nobody's strong enough to take this box right and because nobody's strong enough to take this box nobody's strong enough to take this box the box with nine tins of paint so the school has all the tins of paint it needs. It's got its 100 tins of paint now, right? And if we total up, let's see. Here, yeah, we had one child bring uh, a box in and it had one tin of paint. Here we had two children bringing in uh, two boxes. Each box had two tins of paint, so that's a total of four tins of paint. Here there were three children, each children carried three, three tins, um, and that's nine tins of paint, okay, this is 16 tins of paint, 25 tins of paint, 24 tins of paint, 20, and 21 tins of paint. So if we plot that as a graph here, we get this graph like this. And um, this is a, a little bit similar well, to uh, how light behaves, really. If we say that this is the energy, yes, or the frequency, because we've said as we increase the frequency, we actually increase the energy, right? We can see in the beginning, um, as we increase the frequency, or as we increase the n uh, number of tins of paint in the box, yes, we get more uh, tins being delivered or um, more intensity or more energy. Right? But what happens is, uh, uh, as the boxes get heavier, uh, there are not so many children who can take the heavier boxes. right? And so very, very quickly, the intensity diminishes or the number of boxes the number of boxes which contain a large uh, number of paint tins uh, diminishes go, goes down okay so um, so in a way this example sort of explains how quantum mechanics works